Good evening everyone and welcome to Evening Prayers for this Thursday, the 6th of June, a momentous day in history. D-Day was the start of Allied operations which would ultimately liberate Western Europe, defeat Nazi Germany and end the Second World War. O oh God, Make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praises throughout the world. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I have chosen this evening to reflect upon the thoughts of today. And so I have chosen Psalm 85, verses 10 to 13. O mercy and truth have met, righteousness and peace have kissed. Truth sprouts from the ground and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will certainly give us what is good and our land will produce crops. Righteousness will go ahead of him and make a path for his steps. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our reading this evening is part of the lectionary reading but I have just chosen to read Ecclesiastes, the end part of tonight's reading, chapter 4, verses 3. Forgive me, chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. Is it better to be dead? Again, I saw all the people who were treated badly here on earth. I saw their tears. I saw that they had no one to comfort them. Cruel people had all the power. There was no one to comfort the people they hurt. I decided that the dead are better off than the living, that those who have never been born are better off still. They have not seen the evil that is done here on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our 
Ai. Here we go. I googled earlier on and I asked the question, where are the ongoing armed conflicts? And Wikipedia came up with a list far, far, far too long for me to read out. But as you scroll down the list, it is amazing how much of God's earth is in conflict. How many people are hurting? How many people are killed? How many families are grieving? How many people are touched by war? And when we think of D-Day today, we remember those who took part in that amazing thing that happened on those beaches in Normandy. The thousands of people who lost their lives. But it was the beginning of the end of the Second World War. Those people gave everything. And today they have been remembered along with those who are still with us. I was also reflecting on how people must have felt then. And I came upon um, a piece that was written about Anne Frank, who was born in 1929 and died in 1945. On June 6th, 1944, Anne recorded the most momentous news she and her family had heard in years. She wrote, this is D-Day. The BBC announced at 12, this is the day the invasion has become, begun. Her reaction to the news was jubilant, but tinged with disbelief. Is this really the beginning of the long-awaited liberation? The liberation we've talked about so much, which still seems too good, too much of a fairy tale ever to come true. Will this year, 1944, bring us victory? We don't know yet, but where there's hope, there's life. It fills us with fresh courage and makes us strong again. Anne knew that the Allied landings would not immediately bring liberation and freedom. She wrote realistically about the, the fears, hardships and suffering still to come, but now hoped the end was in sight. Tragically, Anne did not experience the liberation for which she longed so fervently. Her family's hiding place was betrayed to the Nazis and she did not survive her imprisonment. Her diary entry for June the 6th, 1944, proves, however, that she had not given up hope. And hope is ours in Jesus, our Saviour. I also read a reflection from a gentleman who wrote a blog about the war in Ukraine. As I sit on a plane departing from my recent trip to Ukraine, I am filled with so much hope, but also so much urgency. Hope because I met with the families we have supported from Cherkasy and Mykolaiv, and I feel, felt their hope, their optimism, despite the continuing fight, despite the continuing sense of loss of their loved ones, spouses, fathers of children who have died defending Ukraine. Families have shared how their lives have changed since the healing base camps, how despite their loss, they have been able to recover a sense of self, a sense of purpose in their lives how they have chosen to climb the next mountain despite the pain. I also left with an absolute sense of urgency as our world and politics have been filled with a dangerous sense of cynicism, a sense of an inability to change conditions for the better. The people of Ukraine continue to fight for their lives, for their country, for a return to peace. 
They need our help now more than ever. And we can all do more. We can all choose to do something to help those in need and help these families heal. We can support the Ukrainian people with prayers, with moral support through social media and with supporting actions from governments around the world. And isn't that statement true of all the conflicts that are happening in this world at this time? We can do more. We can support the people through prayer, through moral support, through social media. And my goodness me, governments can make a difference. But what we do, friends, is use our best weapon, which is prayer. We can pray for all of those who are caught up in conflict. And we can pray with thanks for all those who have given their lives. And we can pray for all those who continue to struggle in their own countries or in their countries of their fathers and mothers and families who are struggling with, with conflict right now, today, and in the next weeks and months to come. D-Day is an important day in our history and in the history of many countries who took part in that um, Normandy landing. And so today we give thanks for all those who surrendered their lives But we also give thanks to the King of Kings who gave his life for us so that we might live, so that we might help to bring peace to this wonderful world that God created. Amen. And now a choir sing. John Rutter's Deep Peace.
Let us pray. For in him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. For it pleased God that in him all fullness should dwell, and through him all things be reconciled to himself. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I don't know if any of you read the URC Daily Devotions. Today was a beautiful prayer from the Brigadine, Brigadine Sisters in Australia. God of peace, may we become peacemakers by feeding the hungry, welcoming the stranger, planting kindness and nurturing peace wherever we are. We pray because of our love for creation and because of our trust in a loving God. Above all, we pray for an end to violence and for peace throughout the world. God of justice, may we become justice makers by sharing goodwill, upholding the rights of all beings, sharing our gifts and nurturing justice wherever we are. We pray for these things with humility because of the hope that is within us and because of our faith in the ultimate triumph of good over evil. Amen. And as we pray, we now bring before God, using our cycle of prayer for this East Midlands Synod, the ministers, elders and members of all our churches in Northamptonshire. As part of our prayers each night, we pray for a peaceful re resolution to situations where conflict is rife across the world. Today is no different. We pray for peace in our world again. And with hearts full of peace, healing peace, we pray for all of those names who have been added to our prayer list. For Chris Willis, our administrator and office manager in the East Midlands Synod, following her surgery. For Elaine Dre, secretary of our former Ermin URC, in her pain and anxiety as she awaits surgery. For June Pevy, for Graham Garleb, following surgery and giving thanks for the medical team and praying for his recovery. For the Reverend Caroline Andrews, for Roger Allen and the Reverend Ruth Allen in her care and concern for him. With my parents, Brian and Dorothy Russell. For Barbara Turner of Holly Moorside URC as she awaits surgery. For the Reverend Helen Wakefield Carr in her ongoing cancer treatment. For the Reverend Liz Adams. For the Reverend Hamish Temple for recovery from surgery. For Jean Schenk and for the Reverend Brian Schenk in his care and concern for her. For the Reverend Graham and Vera Mascari. For Father Andy Moynier's parish priest with Ankatea for her friend Bea, with the Reverend Claire and the Reverend Brian Davison for Susie, their daughter, for Cheryl and for Prince and the family in their ongoing care for her, with Andy for Mike, his dad, and for Liz and Ruth in their ongoing care of him, for John 
and for Irene as she continues to look after him. For Margaret Davis, secretary of our former URC Rose Hill, who is very poorly. And we pray for those who grieve, especially for my sister Carolyn on the death of her husband, Steve. Also with my husband, Paul, and his dad, Roy, and all the family on the death of Paul's mum, Pat. For those who grieve for Don Buxton, especially the Reverend Maureen Buxton. And for all who grieve for Bishop Alan Wilson, especially his wife Lucy and the family. And we pray for all those who grieve the passing of loved ones. Father God, we come to you tonight with hope in our hearts. Hope of light that will shine over this world that you created. A light that will shine in the lives of those who are hurting. A light that will shine with those who are struggling. A light that will shine with those who are caught up in war and conflict. A light that will shine as some remember lost friends and loved ones from conflicts before. Father God, history is important, but the future is where you want us to be. Help us all to live for you, to strive to make this world wonderful once more, to bring your light and your glory to this place and to bring peace to this broken world. Father God, bless us all as we continue to strive for all that you want us to do. In your name we pray, Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And now, let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Friends, I chose this piece of music to go out tonight. Shalom, Shavarim.
the Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace tonight and always. Good night and God bless.